All right, welcome back. Welcome back to another vlog. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I have not done any videos for uh, multiple days because I'm at the World Series of Poker. My first event ever I played was yesterday. Uh, it is actually day two. I'm gonna walk in this hallway real quick and then I'm gonna stand and talk to you more about uh, my experience. So basically, um, by the way, I wanna show you something cool over here. This is the main event area where everything's on TV. Basically, I uh, play in a th uh, turn, uh, World Series of Poker 2019 event, number 22, $1,000 buy-in, double stack. I think what that means is basically you get double the amount of chips, but the levels are faster. The 30-minute levels for day one was uh, 20 levels, and basically uh, every four levels you get a 20-minute break. By the way, this is the stage. I'm not going to be able to video in here inside, but that is where all of the stuff you see on TV, uh, that's awesome. Pretty awesome. All right, so, and thanks for watching that. <laughs> all right, so basically this is what's happened. Uh, I was, we gave him 40,000 chips day one, and uh, I think right out of the gun, gun I got uh, about 10%. Before the first break, I got about 10% more chips, about 45,000 chips or something. Pretty good start. Um, then I, uh, at a certain point before the lunch break, or actually, no, before like the, first, the lunch break or something, you get like a, a lunch break. Um, I was, no, 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 actually, you know what? Sorry, do you even get a lunch break? Yeah, there was a lunch break. I, you know what? It's been, I think there was a lunch break or another break. Basically, I was able to get to a point where I had like 65,000 chips. And first off, for a person that's never played tournament poker um, and from this largest scale, in fact, the only tournament poker I ever played was probably like a $100 buy-in um, type of thing. It was like at an indie casino, uh, you know, like maybe, I think it was like a Washington State uh, poker tournament thing, $550 buy-in, and I, you know, got knocked out with like a pocket jacks or something. It was just, I found po tournament poker to be very like uh, grindy very just you have to be super patient and it's different than a cash game because uh, there's a lot of all-ins there's not like a lot of poker being played at um, you know especially at the later rounds people start going all in a lot um, so I found it to be very much like looser you know like people have you know sometimes they shouldn't even be calling you and they call you whereas the games I do play usually in a casino are cash games I find cash games to be a lot more you know you're able to like the variance is a little different, right? Because you can see flops. Uh, you also don't see a lot of all-ins in the first two cards. Uh, maybe some two bets, maybe some three bets. But generally, I, I, cash games I do a lot better on. Um, I think a lot, a lot. Another thing is in cash games, there's a lot of like people that are just drinking and getting hammered. You can actually, you know, take advantage of players who are just paying, playing poorly. Um, and you know, I'm not saying that in tournament poker there's not opportunities to do that. But I find overall, uh, cash games fits my style. The other thing is I'm extremely impatient. So, you know, I like to play like craps or blackjack or baccarat. Um, when it comes to gambling, you know, poker, you have to be extremely patient. And um, it's just one of those things I haven't really, you know. And by the way, I'm not admitting I'm a great poker player or anything. I just, I think part of it is, I think uh, the fact that I made day two uh, for this event, it's starting here at 12. Um, it, I feel like it has to, you know, the cards that I got were not that great. Um, now, I, granted, there were some cards where I got where I got some decent sized hands that put me over the top. Uh, let me talk about one poor opponent on hand. There was a hand where I had, I actually had pocket aces, but I had two callers. I basically had another guy who was short stacked, went all in. Uh, and then the, another guy, um, uh, basically, did I shove all in? No, no, no. I, I went all in. The other guy, another guy went all in, who was a middle, middle level stack. I had a little bit more chips than he did. And then I had more chips than these guys and I had pocket aces. I called, you know, obviously, you know, this is all pre-flop. The guy with the short stack had king 10 offsuit. Uh, other guy had key, ace king uh, offsuit. And uh, so, you know, it's a pretty uh, high percentage hand. So the flop comes out, uh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, the, the flop comes out basically a straight draw um, at the flop, essentially. So 
the guy the short stack could technically win his short stack portion uh, with like a, I think it was like he needed a queen or something like that. So uh, the turn and the river didn't come out, so I basically came out with the pocket aces. And pocket aces in that position is super strong. Um, it's just very hard to, to beat because obviously one guy has an ace king, the other guy has a king 10, so you know, two of the kings are already gone. And basically, um, for me, it's, it's more about just not getting killed on a flush or a straight. But I mean, that hand took me way over top. Um, I think I, my highest point chip total was like 375,000. So I ended up with 216,000 chips uh, for day two, and I'm starting here in about 30 minutes or so. And uh, the other thing about day two is I actually have to um, take a plane, a plane, a flight. Uh, I take a flight at 3:50 uh, p.m. So I'm kind of in a situation where it's like if I don't actually, uh, <laughs> okay. So I, I, I want you guys to put in the comments below some strategy here. Here, here's the situation. I got 216,000 chips. There's about eight people who have a million chips. There's a lot of people at 400,000 chips. Um, and then there's people well, well below 200,000 chips. There's all hundreds and even below 100 chips. So I think I'm ranked 225 or 230 in the chip count. I don't know, 250 comparative to the 450 players left. So it's kind of in the middle of the pack of the chips, but I, I don't think it's a horrible position. I, I just feel like, and then I just saw the table pairings that I have. Um, there's, you know, there's a guy with 600,000 chips, but then there's a bunch of people with 100,000, 60, one guy has 6,000 chips, guy has 200 something thousand, 300,000. So I don't think the table necessarily is dominant in chips. So I think there's an opportunity there. You know, I think there's an opportunity to maybe uh, rack up some chips. My problem here, guys, is this. Uh, what would you do? Would you, obviously, you know, look, this is my first time ever playing in a, a, this kind of event. Obviously, caching is obviously like a big thing. I, apparently, you know, caching, getting, uh, getting in the money is a huge thing in poker, obviously, right? You want to get in the money every time. Um, so should I take the opportunity to just work, you know, play as hard as I can, Try to do play great cards, you know, or you know, just play play well, good, play good poker, rather than feeling rushed and inspired to go all in. I mean, that's kind of one of the questions I, I'm asking myself here: is should I do that? And that's one of the hardest things to figure out. So, you know, I actually got to give a shout out to Jeff. Uh, oh, I can't remember his last name. It's not Lebowski. It's Bosky or something. I'll, I'll put his YouTube channel below. He's about twenty thousand subscribers. We met up for uh, actually dinner at the Voodoo. Uh, during the dinner break, and uh, me and Dan, Open Boosters, we were just hanging out. Dan's also, Dan, by the way, Dan also played in the World Series event, same event I played, and he basically uh, got uh, lost to a, a, a bigger set. He had a pair of nines, uh, the other guy had a pair of tens, and the flop comes out the nuts, nine, ten, something else. And basically they bet it out, and the guy just had a, a, you know, a set. No flush, no straight, nothing. So that was one of those, I think he played correctly. You gotta just commit to chips and go for it. I, I think that was accurate, correct for you, but he, he didn't buy in back again, so that was, I think that's fine. Um, so as far as, this, sorry, as far as the situation is concerned, um, what exactly do you think I should do? Do you think I should, you know, should I, should, basically should I manipulate my, should I change my strategy of playing, you know, quality poker I would say like really reading people or just go more like Captain Commando and just balls out and just go all in on things um, because of time I mean I do have about two hours of poker I can play and then I can get cash out apparently I basically the airport's pretty close I can get my cash but you know my whatever place I get I, the other thing is you know the other problems I check with Alaska Airlines and they only have so many flights back uh, they don't actually. They don't even have a flight later tonight. Uh, right now, I, I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's sold out. And then the other problem is, you know, I know, you know, I got kids and stuff. I want to like make sure I make it back and help them out tomorrow. And my, you know, my father-in-law has been help, helpful to help me out. So, what would you guys do? Would you say, hey, you know, wife, father-in-law, help me out here? You know, this is like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Or would you just go and would you just just play? For, play for four hours, have a good time, and cash out, essentially. I don't know, man. I'm a, I think I'm a little bit more, you know, 
like people ask me, am I nervous playing day two or maybe I'll get, get there? I'm like, no, I think I'm more nervous about just missing my flight. I don't, I don't want to feel like that. I just don't want to feel like I, you know, did all this. Turn, like my gut says, if, if, if I, you know, like the top prize is like $450,000 or something, right? I mean, obviously getting to a final table and, or even winning a bracelet is a dream for anybody, right? For a World Series. So to have a chance to do that is absolutely nuts. And the other thing is, um, Open Boosters Dan was saying, you know, Dan, the thing is, you know, how often, like people, people don't really get an opportunity like this that often in life. It's like, you know, this is your first time you got, you know, you, you, you played decently. What, you know, you got lucky too. You know, I mean, I, I have to say the luck was I didn't really play. Um, I, I, there wasn't a hand where I was like drawing dead necessarily or just making like all in calls for people that are short stacked and just losing to them. I, I didn't do that once. I was, blu I was doing the typical bluffing. Um, you know, I didn't get very good cards for a lot of the hands I won actually. So I gotta say, I, I was playing, you know, I was reading people well. There were certain players where I was really hammering on where I, I could kind of tell that, you know, when they're like way weaker, they're, you know, they're, the way they were betting, you know, I would re-raise them um, and they would fold, you know. So these are things that you're reading off people. Certain players are just more aggressive. Uh, you know, a couple of players I had a real, the stronger players I actually had a really good hand. Uh, but I, you know, I was doing some acting and you know, acting like I had nothing, you know. And uh, they gave, they paid me out on some of the chips and they didn't go all in, which I which I hope they I wish they would. But you know, the acting worked out. Meaning, you know, there's things like you know, basically saying like, oh, you know, this is terrible. Just 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 or just or just saying, oh, I got an amazing hand. Just just basically just playing Jedi mind tricks. I feel like the acting job kind of worked out. Just you know, just kind of varying it up. It wasn't always the same, right? So. I felt like I wasn't getting ready. All right, all right, so we're back. I did my uh, day one vlog, and then I, here's day two. I just got knocked out, but I just explained to Jeff the hand I got knocked out. Long story short, I was down at 260,000 chips starting out. I, I, I just killed it. I knocked three people out, got to 750K chips, had about 475K chips at one point. Jeff is professional. I explained to him the situation. So Jeff, why don't you go through, because he'll explain the situation, what you've done each piece of part of it. Okay, so uh, player opens to 40,000 at 20,000 big blind, Daniel Flash with the king queen offsuit. Standard play, you could three bet, but it depends on the player. Uh, when the flop, what, what would you have done there? Uh, probably just call. Just call okay. So that was the right move. Because you don't want to three bet and then fold your jam. You can play a pot in position. So you call the king queen, your head's up against a player, unknown cards of course. Flop comes queen high with two diamonds. You have a diamond, you have top pair, you bet 40,000. Pretty standard and just call, you know? You would call. Just call. No, uh, so okay. You don't want to fold out all his bluffs. You want him to keep bluffing if, if he is bluffing. So when the, um, the turn comes a diamond, he bets 100K. He could have a flush, but that's pretty unlikely since you have a diamond and you have top pair. I think the best play is probably just to call in position to see what happens on the river. But you can also shove to deny equity from all the hands that he might still be drawing with. He might have the ace of diamonds. He could have ace king with the ace or king of diamonds. And he hits that on the river, and you're going to be kicking yourself. So I shoved on the turn, and then he insta-calls, and flips over jack nine of diamonds. Now, I still have a chance to, to win because I have a queen of diamonds. Yep. And uh, the, tur the river was a black card. But you want to have shoved on the... Turn, probably not, just because of how you played the hand. You call pre, you call the turn. you got to keep calling. If you're going to play it aggressively, play it aggressively from the beginning. Raise uh, three bet pre, bet the turn, bet the flop, show the turn. But as played, you call in position, see what happens. And even if a brick comes on the river, it's going to be real tough to fold king queen on that board. Right, right. So regardless, right. it's tough to not go broke there. So let's so let's play this part out. Let's say at the turn, I didn't shove all in. I called as 100k. Yep. The river comes a brick uh, for to, for me to get the four the four car flush. Yep. Um, you would still let, let us say he shoves all in. That's tough. Point. It's very tough. Okay, but obviously if it was if it was a dime like a flush on the river, then I definitely pull all. Uh, yeah. Because I, I you got I, the I, second nuts. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's overall, what do you, yeah. okay. <laughs> all right. So you got to win those. So that was my that was my first time experience, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Dan's right here, by the way. Say hi to Dan. Hey, everybody. And we had a great time. Jeff, we had some videos with Jeff also. Check out Jeff. Jeff, what's your channel? Jeff Boski on YouTube. Boski. All right, guys. I'll put it on the link below. Thanks again for coaching me a little bit. 
Dan, thanks again for being my friend and hanging out. I had a great experience. Thanks, guys. It was awesome. Take care.